All right, uh, dependent events and conditional probability. So when when you're figuring dependent events basically means that the probability of one event is going to affect, affect the probability of the event that comes after it, the second event. And so we can we have to use what's called conditional probability for that. So when you have dependent events, the basic formula looks like this. So the probability of event A and event B happening um, where they're dependent is the probability of event A times the probability of event B given that event A has occurred. So there's that conditional probability part right here. So what that means, just to go, go again, is this basically says what is the probability of B given that A has occurred. So that's really all it means. And, you know, mathematicians, were, we love our symbols. And so that's generally what that, that's just all that stands for. Again, whenever you see that bar in a probability, you can insert the word given. And uh, so this is set B or event B, and this is set A or event A. So this stands for probability. So if you read this as a sentence, what is the probability of set B, set B given set A has occurred? So I know it's tricky, but you'll get used to it. So here is an example. So what is the probability of drawing two aces in a standard deck of 52 cards without replacement? So we're going to pull a card out of the deck, keep it in our hand, and then pull another card out of the deck and keep it in our hand. So the probability, so let's let ace uh, set A be first card is an ace and then set B would be second card is an ace okay so um, to calculate this we need again that formula so the formula is would be the probability of A, the first card's an ace, times the probability that the second card is an ace, given the first card was an ace. So I was kind of writing that as I said it so that you can kind of follow the, the, the words that go with the symbols. And so the probability of the first card being an ace there's four aces and 52 cards um, and times the probability so the probability that the second card is an ace well there's only three cards left in the deck uh, three aces sorry there are only three aces left in the deck because I have one in my hand and there are 51 cards left in the deck because again there's one in my hand and so you could multiply that out just as is. It'd be easier to reduce it first, but you'd have 12 over 51 times 52. I don't have that multiplication rule in my head quickly. but So it's 12 out of 2,652. Well, if you reduce this um, before you would have multiplied, that would have been the easier way to go. But the, uh, 4 50 seconds is 1 13th. Um, Let's just double check that 52 divided by 4. I've been doing it. Yep. And then 3 51sts is uh, 1 out of 17. And so this would reduce to 1 out of 13 times 17, which is 221. So that's your chances of drawing two aces in a in a standard deck of 52 cards. Alright, so let's give you another problem. 
So here's a second problem. What is the probability of drawing an ace and a jack in a standard deck of 52 playing cards without replacement? Again, we're going to pull a card out, stick it in our pocket, or lay it on the table, and then have another card dealt to us or draw another card out of the deck. So that's what the without replacement stands for. So if you have, so that first, so um, let's let event A, here's the, here's the bad, here's what you should do. Try this problem, see if you can get it right, hit pause, stop this video, see if you can do this problem, and then come back and then I'll solve it for you. I do have, I'm just going to warn you, I, there's a little bit of a trick here. So you've got a little bit more to, to figure out than just a simple ace jack. But give it a shot. See if you can do it. Because I'll bet you at least get part of it right. Okay, so now that you're back. So drawing an ace and a jack. Okay. So the probability of an ace times the probability woo, the probability of getting a jack given an ace has been drawn out of the deck would be one thing we need to do. There's an, actually a second part to this. So the probability of an ace is 4 out of 52. Now we drew an ace out of the deck. So that doesn't affect my jacks any. We still have four jacks. But now I only have 51 cards. And so we can go ahead and reduce this. So this would be 4 out of 52 again is that 1 13th. And so you'd have 4 out of 51 times 13 is 663. Now, good job if you got that far, but the way my problem is worded, it didn't matter whether you got the ace first or the jack first. I just wanted to know what's the probability of getting an ace and a jack. So we could have gotten the jack first, so we need to look at that situation. We have two situations. Situation one is the one we just solved. Or... We could have situation two. This is number one. Situation number two that could have happened is we could have gotten the jack first and the ace second. So that would be the probability of a jack times the probability times the probability of an ace the second time, given that a jack has been dealt. So that one again, probability of a jack, it's going to be about the same thing. It probably is exactly the same thing. 4 out of 52 for a jack. So there's 4 jacks and 52 cards, but we've taken a jack away. And now we're going to draw, draw out an ace, and there's still 4 aces. We haven't lost any aces, but there's only 51 cards left. And so again, you could reduce that ahead of time. So that's 1 and 13, and it's exactly the same thing. 4 out of 663. But since I said the word or, we're going to have to add these, and these are mutually exclusive events. Jacks and aces don't have any overlap. And so you'd have 4 out of 60, 663 plus another 4 out of 663 for situation 2. And so our probability of getting an ace or a, and a jack probability of an ace and a jack is 8 out of 663. So there you have it. Um, I'm going to stop there with this, this video. Um, there's more to this, but hopefully this gets you started. And if you have questions, let me know. Uh, see you next time, and good luck.